Good morning. We would welcome you here to worship, whether you're here in the sanctuary with us, listening in the parking lot, or watching us via YouTube live or uh, recorded subsequently. In a minute, we'll begin our songs for centering, and a little later, the pastor will speak about our new mask policy. But for right now, we do ask out of compassion and love for everyone that while we are singing, you would continue to wear your masks because of the close proximity. So as we prepare for songs for centering, we do ask you to keep your masks on, please. If you'd like to stand and join us, we're going to begin with Trading My Sorrows.
take us by the hand. Lead us. Lead us that we can trade our sorrows and trade our pain and trade our sufferings for your good grace and your good life and your good peace in our lives. Come by here as we worship, as we give you praise, as we give you honor, as we feel renewal, as we honor those who are moving from one way of life to another as we hear about prayer and its need for persistence as we come together lord as a community of fellowship of love of grace in you come by here so that in your presence we can know your grace be filled in your peace and live for you, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing <laughs> as we do our call to worship. I thought you were going to do welcome. Up, yeah. down, up, down. <laughs> it's the 13th day of June, and we have rain and sun and a lot of funny weather, but isn't it comforting to see everything starting to open up? And you don't always have to wear your mask. I know we need it to come in and out of here, but uh, life is returning to normal. And as I heard somebody on the radio say this morning, it's comforting. Join with me in the call to worship. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp. To the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hand, I sing for joy. Please remain standing and join with me in the opening prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we, we know, know that, that when we become disconnected from you, our, our lives become parched and unfruitful, and our faith becomes become stunted and dry. dry. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places, strengthening our faith to expand and growing strongly and vigorously to bear the fruit of your mercy, your love, your undying life. Amen. Before we get into the message for youth, let's talk about our mask update. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there was a great discussion on uh, Tuesday night at council meeting, and uh, the council uh, made this agreement and uh, uh, has uh, uh, set this as our new uh, policy that out of the kindness and respect for others, masks should be worn when you come in and when you go out and upon migrating within the church building. Once you're seated, if you've been vaccinated twice, worshipers may remove their masks, but while you're singing, we ask that you continue to wear your masks. That way, you're protecting those around you. Now, if you're up here where I am or where Denise was and uh, Ryan wa uh, was or where uh, Amy was, well, we can take our mask off because we're far enough away and uh, you need to hear us anyway. So, uh, but this is our, our policy. When you come in, have a mask on. When you leave, have a mask on. And uh, if uh, you're singing, have a mask on. But if you're seated during worship, uh, you don't need to wear your mask if you're vaccinated. Also, if you'll, uh, after when the, when the service is done, after the service, uh, please try not to, uh, uh, I don't want to say crowd in the back hall, in the, in the uh, aisles here, start to go out. And if you have conversations that you want to have with people, try to have them outside if you can, uh, because uh, again, we need to be as distanced as possible. Now, get 
to where I need to be here. Graduation. To graduate is to move forward. It's like this. And we're going to hope that I don't trip over myself because I'm tripping over this darn world all morning. You start here at the bottom, right? And then you make a step, perhaps uh, going to elementary school, or preschool first, and then elementary school. Then you make another step, elementary school, middle school, junior high, and then high school. And you feel like you're at the top, right? That's graduating, moving up. But you never stop graduating. You're always moving up. I graduated from high school, went to college, graduated from college, went to seminary, have been through the process for ordination, and even as an ordained pastor, I'm still graduating up. Because this is how God works with us. God doesn't want us to go down when God wants us to move up, up in our spirituality, up in our education, up in our life with God. Always moving up so that we can eventually find that protection, uh, perfection, not protection, perfection. Because we're moving up in love. We're moving by love. So that we are able, in this lifetime, to be perfected in that love. Moving in that love. Up, up. Till the day that we come in contact face to face with Christ Jesus. So we're always graduating. And that's good. Because we're moving up. Moving up closer and closer to God. Today's scripture lesson is from Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So ends the reading. Let's stand and sing together, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Rejoice ye pure in heart, rejoice, give thanks and sing your glorious banner wave on high. Of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Your clear hosannas raise, and hallelujahs loud. Mount answering echoes upward flow. Of incense cloud. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Yes, on through life's long path, still chanting as ye go. From youth to age, my day. Oh, my 
shall end. The weary one shall rest. The pilgrims find their heavenly home. Jerusalem, the blessed. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Praise God who reigns on high, the Lord whom we adore, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Please remain standing for the reading of our gospel lesson this morning. Our gospel lesson comes from the gospel according to St. Luke, found in chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart, he said. In a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice for them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Would you pray with me and for me this morning? Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe in me, breathe through me, breathe out of me, Lord, that I can bring your word this day. Fill me in your spirit and breathe that spirit into my heart, into my mind, into my spirit, that I can proclaim the message that you've given me to proclaim, Lord. So that with ears and hearts ready to receive, we can hear that message and heed it in our faith and our life in you. And live it as those who are your disciples who bring the hope and the life and the peace of Jesus to our world. By your spirit we pray that the words that come from my mouth, that the meditations that come from our hearts, be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are this morning going to continue our series that's dealing with prayer, what prayer is, why we pray, uh, and why prayer is important to us. And this morning I want to talk about why we need to be persistent in prayer. Now, to be persistent means that you insist on something. You're at something, you're not going to give up. You're going to continue to do it. We used to live, one of our parsonages was in a little town called Grover, and the parsonage was right on the edge of a swamp. And so we got some mice every now and then. And at the time, my wife was drinking those uh, international coffee packets. You know what I'm talking about? Had the coffee and the sugar and all of that in it in one. You just put it in the water and heat it up and that kind of thing. Well, she asked me one evening to, to grab her one, and I reached in and pulled one out, and it had been gnawed. So we threw it out, and I got her another one, and she was able to have her coffee. Well... No more than a couple hours later, we were sitting in the living room, and all of a sudden, this mouse came out of nowhere. 
all over the living room. And we tried to catch him, and we couldn't catch him. He was just moving all over the place. He was on a java high and a sugar high. And he was just moving everywhere. And he was persistent in doing it. We couldn't get him to stop. We finally had to go up and go to bed. He was a persistent little bugger. He never gave up. First getting the java and then just running around the house. Until we came down the next morning and we found him in the middle of the living room on his back like this. He had a little mousy heart attack. But boy was he persistent. To be persistent is to be tenacious. It is to be resolute in your action and in your discipline. Reminds me of the story of the duck. Goes into the feed store and he says to the clerk, Do you have any duck food? No, we don't have any duck food. Okay, and he leaves. The next day he goes in and he says, Do you have any duck food? No, we don't have any duck food. Okay, and he leaves. The next day he goes in and the clerk sees him and he says, if you ask me if we have any duck food, I'm going to nail your feet to the floor. And the duck looks up and says, do you, have, do you sell nails? He goes, we don't know, we don't sell any nails. He goes, do you have any duck food? <laughs> to be persistent means that we work at getting the goal accomplished, completed. Never giving up, never giving in, so we can get it right in what we do, how we discipline ourselves, how we act, and how we live each day. Thomas Edison said that the greatest essentials to achieve anything worthwhile are first, hard work, second, stick to and third, common sense. Stick to He means persistence. Persistence in how we work, what we do, how we discipline ourselves. And especially for we Christians, stick to in our prayer life. Prayer is that communication with God. We talked about that last week. Heart to heart. That opens to God that deepest need and that heart's desire for what is best from God. But prayer is not occasional. There's a discipline to it. There's a stick to it, in it, in it, a persistence in praying. Praying to God always in faith, to where God will lead us, to what God thinks is best for us. Prayer is the way of life that we are to live daily. We are to be persistent in prayer. Now, what do I mean? In our gospel lesson from Luke, Luke tells us that Jesus told them the following parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. And he told them the parable. In a certain city there was a judge. And he didn't fear God and he didn't have respect for people. Now in that same city there was a widow. And that widow kept coming to him saying, grant me justice against my opponent. And while he refused for a while, Later he said to himself, though I don't have respect for God, and I, I don't fear for God or respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he, not de will he delay in helping them? I tell you, he will get quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This parable is more about stick to and less about nagging. It's about a widow's quest for justice. Now the widow is a sad, pathetic character in Jewish literature. Seen as weak, vulnerable, easily taken advantage of by those who would seem stronger than her, like this non caring, non feeling judge. This judge who won't give her justice, and yet she persists each day, 
coming to him again and again and again. And even though he has no fear of God and no respect for anyone, he relents and gives her what she seeks. Not because he sees her and her need for justice, but because he just can't take one minute more. Yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so she will not wear me out. The widow seeks justice from this unscrupulous judge who gives in to her need. And what does Jesus say? How much more will God give to his children who call to him day and night and not delay? In persistent faith, we're to rely on God who listens, who hears, and who answers us. Giving what is best for our lives so that in God we're able to walk in faith and trust in Him. A persistent faith is a faith that is able to pray persistently. Asking God to help and relieve and renew us daily. Not treating God like a genie who grants wishes, but trusting God through faith so that we won't lose heart, but live faithfully for God in Jesus daily in our life of prayer. As I said last week, prayer is not a wish list that we invoke when it's convenient. It's like the little, not like the little boy who is in church and suddenly he begins to make a lot of noise, giggling and, and laughing and playing with the pencils and the books and knocking things down and, and just making a nuisance out of himself. And his father finally has enough and grabs him like this and holds him like this and starts up the aisle and he's yelling, no, daddy, no, no, daddy, no. And he gets to the door and he turns around and says to the congregation, pray for me, pray for me. Prayer is not convenient asking. Prayer is a humbled persistence. It is a life open to God that trusts that God is faithful and will hear our need and our desire, our hope, our need for justice as we walk in faith with God, that we can be strong in God, that we can live for God in Jesus as we are his people of faith. Christopher Burkett said, faith does not insulate us from the turmoil of human living. Hope always comes hard. Praying always without losing heart is part of the struggle of faith. It's not easy to be persistent in faith. But we pray so that we are in tune with God, so that we won't lose heart in such a world that we live in, in our struggles, in our sufferings. Trusting in God despite the world around us so that we can rejoice, so that we can know and live in peace with, jo- uh, with, with Jesus. St. Paul in Philippians said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What Paul is calling for here is three things. First, that we rejoice in God, who is not far and will not abandon us. Secondly, we're to not worry, we're not to fret, but to trust in God, who will hear and know what we need. And thirdly, to live in peace in God as we trust in Christ Jesus, who will guard us and renew us in prayer as we live in that calm of faith with him. In Thessalonians, Paul said, pray continually or pray always. That means we are living prayer by living for God so that we can be stick to in our faith and in our prayer. As we connect with God, even as we struggle, And look to God for all that we need. Not worrying, not fretting, not getting upset, but rejoicing and trusting and walking in peace with Jesus through prayer. So that our lives 
are walking in that life with God and not losing heart. Friends, your prayer life needs to be persistent. I'm not talking about nagging, like uh, uh, coming at God daily like the, the widow with the judge. But humbly seeking God's way and life for you so that your trust and your faith in God is persistent, uh, is a persistent life with God in our world. It is a life that offers God your need and your hope, knowing God will not abandon you, but will give you what is best. It is a life, a prayer, that in every situation walks with God, even in the worst situations. It is to know God's love and grace and strength in life, so that in the persistence of faith, you're living not for you and maybe you get lost in heart, but living for God and Jesus, who also prayed persistently. And we're going to talk about that next week, how Jesus prayed persistently. But as you pray, be persistent so in faith you can trust and know God is with you so that you can walk in ways of living prayer and be stick to in that faith even when the heat is on, even when the struggles are bad, even when the darkness is coming in. You can't lose heart if you're persistent in faith with God. One more story. Young man wants a watch. And he drops every hint that he wants a watch. But he doesn't get a watch. Finally, one night, as it's dinner time, his, my, his, his mother says to him, why don't you say the prayer? And he says, I know what I want to pray for, and so before we pray, I want to quote St. Mark. Jesus said in St. Mark, I say to you what I say to all. Watch! What do we pray? We're to pray not to lose heart. Because in Jesus... We pray persistently as we trust God. Because in prayer, we don't lose heart. We live persistent faith that trusts God is with us and will not abandon us. But will hear and answer with what is best. That despite the world around us, we are to live in faith that is persistent, that is stick to So that when we pray, we draw closer to God. We move closer to Jesus. We walk in that faith. And even in the struggles, know that God is there. Come, ye disconsolate, where ye languish. Come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded hearts, here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Help us to be persistent, Lord. Not nagging, but persistent. Knowing that in you, in our tenacious faith, in you, in our stick to of faith, we have an ally who is with us always, we have a God who loves us so much that you don't abandon us. But you hear and you answer, maybe in ways we don't expect. But you give us what is best so that we can walk in faith, so that we can be strong in you, so that we can draw closer to you in Jesus, so that we won't lose heart. 
but live for you, Lord. And live in you, Lord, each day by living prayer in our lives. In the faith that we walk, in the faith that we give, in the faith that we are persistent with daily. Be with us, Lord, always. And guide us in this persistence faith. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, good morning and welcome. Glad you're all here today, whether you're here uh, in the sanctuary with us worshiping, or if you're on YouTube and watching us at home, or if you're out in the parking lot and you have us tuned in on our uh, radio transponder 107.3 FM. We are glad that you are here with us today. Folks, stand up, greet each other, just turn around, say good morning to one another. Now, this is June, and June is graduation season. And so this morning we want to honor and recognize our folks who are graduating this year. And so on, will you come forward if you have graduated this year? Silly me.
Thank you, Lord, for their achievement and graduates from my school. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. There was a couple more, weren't there? Yeah. Um, this guy, John Gilson, who's not here this morning, who, wait, stop going so fast. I can't read that fast. Um, he wants to attend Johnson College for heavy equipment management. And uh, Isabel Messersmith, we're not sure what her plans are, but we want to honor them as well. So if you see them. All of them were National Honor Society. Wonderful. That's wonderful to hear. Okay, moving forward here. Just a few things to keep in mind. Remembering that we are still at our 930 service in person on YouTube and, and our drive-in radio transponder. Uh, if you have offerings, we rely on those offerings and your, uh, your uh, God's uh, ties. Uh, to help keep the ministries of our church up and running. So uh, take it down, take your check down to the end of the hallway here uh, where the T is, and then right to your uh, right, there's a box, put it in there. Or if you want to bring it here to the church, we're here uh, Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 3 uh, p.m. Um, if you want to offer a, a, an offering for Sunday school or Christian education, you can do that as well, but be sure to write Sunday school on the memo line. Already talked about the mask update, uh, and so just remember when you come in, wear a mask. When you go out, wear a mask. When you're walking around uh, the church building, uh, you uh, need to wear a mask. If you're in a, a Sunday school or if you're in a meeting and you sit down, uh, you can take the masks off if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, right now we're in the middle of uh, uh, our prayer life in God, and uh, we've, we've done two out of, uh, I think... I forget how many. I've got nine, I think. Uh, but uh, next week we're going to talk about uh, uh, how Jesus prayed. Rest in the Psalms, Sunday, July 11th through August uh, 29th, 7 o'clock, a peaceful evening of Vespers. And uh, we'll be down at the lake at uh, Whispering Pines, and uh, someone will lead us every week in a psalm, and uh, they'll be singing and pray, uh, prayer and uh, praise and uh, uh, just a time to have fellowship together. So join us for that when we begin in July on the 11th. Uh, the Beach Lake Social Group begins today. Uh, two guys uh, gathering at 145 at the restaurant and ordering by 2 o'clock. Everyone is welcome, singles and couples and all ages and church members and non-church members. Monthly Sunday luncheons at the local area restaurant for fellowship and fun. See Luann. Uh, she'll be able to take care of you. Still seeking servants to be projectionists and ushers and in video production. Um, fair trade, our new deeper discounts. The yellow sticker items are now 50% off. Can't beat that. Um, make a mixed box of 20 tea bags for only a dollar. Wow. Serving and, dis uh, serving and display features are for sale at clearance prices. Come down to the trade room, which will be open after our service this morning. Remember, social distancing and mass requirements and only one person at a time is allowed in the room. Railroad uh, baseball, August 6th. Cost per ticket is $10. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, be involved with our church going out to the ballpark that night, uh, see Rob Griffiths, and he'll take care of you there. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, uh, Arlene uh, Latourette this morning, and... Uh, uh, the 27th of June. There won't be anybody here for um, technology. And so uh, we'll have microphones on and we'll be able to uh, get the transponder going, but there won't be any um, YouTube that week because there won't be anybody to run it. So we thought we'd let you know that so that you were aware of that. Anything else you can see here uh, listed uh, below uh, so that you can... Uh, see what's going on during the week. Anything else that I might have missed? All right. Let's take a minute just to 
breathe. Let's look at our prayer concerns for today. Um, Angie House, who is my wife, she is doing better. Um, she had a good day yesterday, and I hope to, she has a good day today. Uh, every day is different depending on the weather and uh, other factors, and so keep her in prayer. Arlene Stivers, who told me this morning that she's doing much better, and uh, uh, she's with us today, and we're glad she's here. Clayton and Margaret, we're continuing to pray for. Dale and Cindy uh, Wilcox, we continue to pray for. Darlene Anderson, Aaron Mon, Evelyn Dilmuth, Joe Francisco, and uh, uh, Allison, uh, Joe for his knee, and Joe and Allison because they are on their trip. They're on their way west. So we want to pray for uh, travel mercies for them. Linda Roberts, Paul Van Horn II, Phyllis Baselli's great-grandson and, and her granddaughter, Christy, and uh, Roy Rolston, who is also in need of prayer. Those affected by COVID, the frontline workers fighting COVID, uh, those who are giving the vaccinations, uh, our country and circumstances in our world and our preschool. Are there others this morning? Yes, Trish? Thank you, Trish. Others, praises, concerns, whatever you got. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Kate Mon was hospitalized this week and has taken a turn for the better and is now getting additional services. Okay, so Kate Mon, who uh, is in the hospital but is a uh, turn for the better, which is good. <laughs> and they're getting additional services, so we want to pray for Kate. Donna? Uh, prayers for Pam Tembus, my friend and co-worker. She's having surgery on Wednesday. Okay, Pam Tembus? Yes. Okay, uh, who is uh, a co-worker of Donna's who's having surgery on Wednesday. Any others? Take a moment, breathe in and breathe out. Let the spirit move within you. We thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to be here this morning come in worship and in praise and in honor of you. How grateful we are for the freedom to be able to do that. For there are other places where men and women and children have to meet in secret. But we have freedom here in this country that we can come and not have to worry about that. We thank you because you move us to worship this morning. We thank you because you give us hope and worship. We thank you because you help us be persistent in our faith through worship and through prayer. We thank you because you are such a wonderful God who loves us so much, gives us all that we need. Bless you, Lord, and continue to bless us in the power of your love and of your grace and of your peace in our lives, Lord. Especially be with those that we've named before you this morning, those that are going through a difficult time in their lives and difficult situations. Bless them and watch over them and keep them. Touch and renew them in the Spirit, Lord. Touch them with your Spirit that they would be healed and made new in you. Touch them in your presence that they would know your strength and your life. Surround them in your love and comfort them and guide them, Lord. Uphold them through the power of Christ in their lives. They may walk with you, that they might be with you, that they might stay with you, Lord. And know peace, even in the darkest moments. Bless us as your church. 
Help us to continue to grow and become stronger in what we do for you. Move us beyond the building out into the world to reach people and touch people and help people know you and love you and seek to serve you, Lord. Guide our hearts and minds that we are strong in our faith in you, walking with you, guided by you, to do all that we can to let the world know that they are loved through the power of Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless us. Stay with us. Guide us. Renew us. Uphold us. And be with us in the power of your love and of your grace and of your peace, Lord. We pray this in the name of the one who is our Savior, Jesus, who taught us to pray together by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, for thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we conclude our service, let's stand as we sing hymn 526 in the United Methodist hymnal, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
so that you can be strong in God and not lose heart. Go in peace. May the grace of Jesus Christ, may the love of God which is eternal, may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and stay with you, my friends, now and always.